G'day guys, welcome back and in this video I'm going to show you inside my fire strike. Alrighty guys, so this is my fire strike in all its glory on my pretty dirty workbench. Um, so in this video what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to pull the whole blaster apart. I'm going to show every step, I'm not going to cut up this film, I'll speed it up during the un uh, scoring process. But what I'm going to do is... Uh, reminiscent of when I did my in-depth overview on Incendio years ago, half of you, maybe even all of you probably never even saw that video if you want to see it, <laughs> check the card. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the whole thing apart, go through all the internal pieces. I've been getting a lot of questions about this blaster, about how I did the side loading on it. So this is what this video is going to be addressing for all you guys. So hopefully enjoy it. Um, so yeah, let's get into pulling this thing apart. The first step to pulling this blaster apart is getting the top rail off, which is usually a pain in the butt because now I've got to take the sight off, which really sucks. And I don't know about you guys, but I never have my Allen keys sorted out. They're just in one box, which I just come to and pretty much figure out what size fits where. Think any screws aren't flying anywhere? Nope. Awesome. Stuff. All right, so that's one half of the shell. We can place that there. And now this, well, these are the internals to the fire strike. So as you can see, it's pretty much uh, stock standardish in here. It has the stock plunger tube, stock catch, uh, pretty much everything, pretty much stock. Besides up the front here, where we have the breech mechanism. Uh, the upgraded spring in the back here and then the upgraded catch spring So to start off this overview, we will get into the nitty-gritty of The side loading Anyway, <laughs> this is the plunger assembly. This is my blaster tech mark 2 scar This is the brass loading assembly and then this is the stock fire strike plunger tube. In the back here is the plunger rod, which is pretty much stock standard except the upgraded spring. I think this is a 7kg old school Nerf Turf spring uh, when they were being manufactured in Australia. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on it. Uh, it could be a 5kg uh, because it's not hitting the performance that I exactly want. I'm not too sure why. Um, but what I do know that I want is I want a better plunger rod for this blaster because then I can amp up the spring load and get a better seal. So hopefully that's something I can do or an upgrade. I've got a fatter O-ring on the plunger rod, greased up heavily, the heavier spring obviously, and then that's all the mods I did to the plunger rod. I have this box of O-rings that I got from Aldi one time when they were having a sale and sometimes when I want an O-ring for something I just come to this box, grab it out and 9 out of 10 times I have a better O-ring than the stock or whatever thing that I'm working on. So O-ring packs like this are great to have in any workshop. Coming to the plunger tube now. So this is pretty much where most modifications happened. Now at the front here as you can see in a stock fire strike plunger tube assembly. Right here is where the AR would sit. We would then have faux barrel, which then connected onto this front muzzle piece, uh, which you would load your stock full length dart. Now for me, I kept the shrouding pieces of the AR, completely disassembled the AR, and then created a 
brass connection of 17 30 seconds so this is your 17 30 seconds piece through here which is the full barrel length which goes all the way to the end that's the yeah that's your dart fit and then on the outside is 9 16 which slides and creates that perfect air seal now to create this part here I'll see if I can throw up a little sketch but I'll explain how I did it so you keep this cap pretty much for the plunger tube and then inside the cap I have more of this uh, polycarbonate shooting I made a spacer pretty much slotted it inside uh, and then drilled through with a 1732 drill bit which then allowed me to put in this brass piece so it's pretty much a circle like this that goes inside the back of the plunger tube which then caps off this part at the end with a hole through it which I can then glue the 1732 inside of so uh, again I'll try and throw up a sketch or just like a diagram of the whole plunger tube assembly on screen for you guys so you can understand and then coming to the breech loading area it's very very simple this is one piece this is 9 sixteenths uh, that's about four centimeters long and then I have the polycarbonate flap attached to the other side exactly the same I drilled through this with a 1732 bit and then filed it out to get it to fit on the 9 sixteenths and then just glued that on the end and then slid it on to the assembly and you have a side loading fire strike mechanism. It's really, really simple and it's a great little mod uh, that you can do quite quickly actually. Um, so again, I'll throw up a diagram so you guys can see what's going on, but it is really, really easy to do. Uh, it's literally just two pieces. The hardest thing to get is pretty much the polycarbonate and I'll get a sheet now. So this is just a piece of material that I've had laying around the workshop for a while now. As you can see, it's given itself to many projects. Uh, you can find these in Bunnings for about 30 bucks a sheet. Now it's pretty expensive, but what you get is pretty much the strongest see-through uh, material and plastic that you can find uh, in like your local hardware store in Australia anyway. Um, I've used this for so many projects, it's come in handy so many times. Uh, this has gone in a Gera in the top rail, this has gone in this blaster. I've put it in the Crimson Recon. Uh, it's just a great material to use and work with. And because it's so thick, you can do so many things with it. So, uh, if you're after a material that is going to be robust for something and you don't want to 3D print or you want to uh, really make something custom, I guess, uh, this is a great great material to use and I highly recommend it to anyone that's um, trying to mod stuff. So that's it for the plunger assembly, really really easy mod to do, uh, it's a great like weekend build if you wanted to do something on your weekend this is definitely a great weekend build to do. So uh, yeah let's move into, let's actually we'll have a look at the other side here first uh, to show you guys the cutout area. So this cutout here is where you pop your dart into. So when the plunger assembly is all in your blaster like this, this cutout gives you access to the flap and how to and to drop in your next dart. So this I use the existing cutout that's there for the that, that orange piece that's inside the fire strike. Now I use the lines of that to come down and then kind of slope around the front of the blaster. Um, I then cut out, that's about three centimeters long, uh, enough to drop a dart in and enough to slide, enough for the slide to work. You might need a bit of trial and error, so cut a little bit, see if it works, see if you're feeling that and you'd like that area, you're liking how the dart's seating and everything like that, if it's comfy enough for you. If not, file a bit more off and then try again. Uh, I then just cut this little area here just to give it a nice little line as it slopes around. It kind of looks like it, uh, it almost looks like it was there, you know, like it comes down and slides around just like a nice line. Uh, it offsets this curve here and that there. If that was square, it would look a little bit strange. And um, it also gets rid of the like sharp corner that would be remaining there. If it was a 90 degree angle, just gets rid of that and makes yourself not cut yourself on your blaster. So yeah, that's how I did that. And then we'll also quickly have a look 
at the handle because the handle on this blaster is a cyclone shock handle. So we'll pop the handle off and we'll have a look. So as you can see, the whole handle integration was done just on the fire strike handle. Now, lucky enough for the fire strike is that the handle and the actual main blaster are two separate pieces, which is a great gift by the Nerf gods, which allowed me to easily integrate the uh, Cyclone Shock handle uh, with little to no effort really. So if, if you can see the insides there, I know it's black because uh, I did a really thick inside coat, which I probably shouldn't have done. Um, the only real areas that uh, exposed epoxy on the outside is this back corner bit here, which I rounded off to give you a nice comfy back piece. And then at the front here, that connection just there, which I kind of shaped through. And then all across here, that line there is actually epoxy, uh, epoxy putty. We'll send it back to give it that nice smooth line. And luckily enough, it looks like it's meant to be there. Uh, I tried to get this line to come through as smoothly as possible and keep this um, area because uh, it, it, it looks really nice having this line run through here and then the smoothness of the epoxy and this fire strike handle area gives a nice trigger finger mounting position so when you're really holding the blaster your bottom fingers are nice and comfy and then this trigger here uh, sorry this finger here has this nice smooth epoxy and finish which gives it a really nice comfy grippy handle that's pretty much it guys, so I'm now going to serve this HK and put it all back together and then I'll talk to you guys once it's all put back together. So guys, if you enjoyed today's video, please do let me know and I will do more uh, in-depth overviews of all my blasters or like what's inside them. Um, I hope that answered your questions or people that have been asking me questions about how I've done the side loading. Uh, again, I'll put a diagram up to show you like each part and how they fit in, how I did the cap and what's everything screwed out to. And hopefully you guys can do your own rendition. So, Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you want to capture me when I'm not making videos, check my Facebook and Instagram links in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.